The human eye is a specialised sensory organ. Humans have two eyes, which are situated on either side of the face within bony cavities called the orbit. Despite being a relatively small organ, there is more to its anatomy than meets the eye. This incredible sensory organ receives light signals and converts them to nerve impulses, allowing us to perceive colour, depth and movement. Today, we'll have a look at an overview of the basic anatomy of the eye. My name is Dr Anna Blake and this is More Than Skin Deep. Here you can see an image of the human eye removed from the orbit. The sagittal diameter measures 24 to 25 millimetres and the transverse diameter 24 millimetres. As you can see, the eye structure is more dome shaped than round. It can be divided into two parts, the anterior part which contains aqueous humour and is further subdivided into the anterior and posterior chambers, and the posterior part, which contains vitreous humour. Light enters through the anterior surface of the eye and is refracted towards the posterior surface to be converted into nerve impulses which leave the eye via the optic nerve. The optic nerve exits the posterior orbit through the optic canal, which also contains the ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery is the first branch of the internal carotid artery and provides the blood supply to the eye. Now we will look at a cross section of the eye to appreciate its layers. There are three main layers of the eye, the fibrous layer, the vascular layer and the nervous layer. The fibrous layer is the outermost layer. It consists of the sclera and the cornea. The sclera is an opaque white structure which is very fibrous. It is derived from mesenchym. Its main functions include providing shape to the eye and allowing attachment of the extraocular muscles. The extraocular muscles lie external to the eye and allow voluntary and coordinated movement of both eyes. They consist of four recti muscles and two oblique muscles. The four recti muscles originate from the common tendinous ring, which as you can see here, is a fibrous ring of connective tissue surrounding the optic canal at the posterior apex of the orbit. The sclera also fuses with the dura and arachnoid sheaths of the optic nerve, which continues in the optic canal. To allow the optic nerve to leave the eye, the sclera has small holes and is weakened in an area known as the lamina cribrosa. The sclera fuses with the cornea at the limbus, or corneoscleral junction. The cornea is the second structure within the fibrous layer. This very important structure makes up the anterior sixth of the eye and is the main structure involved with the refraction of light. It provides a dioptric power of 43 diopters, which is three times more than a lens in the healthy eye. Unlike the sclera, the cornea is transparent due to uniform arrangement of collagen fibres within lamellar fibrils. There are five layers of the cornea. From anterior to posterior, these are the epithelium, Bowman's layer, corneal stroma, decimase membrane and corneal endothelium. The corneal endothelium contains many active ion pumps, such as the sodium chloride pump, which forces water out of the cornea to help maintain its relatively low hydration status. The cornea is also avascular and relies on diffusion of oxygen and other nutrients from the tear film and aqueous humour. Next, we will move on to the vascular layer. This layer is comprised of the choroid, ciliary body and iris. 
This layer is also referred to as the uvea or uveal tract. The choroid is a highly vascular structure which lies between the outer sclera and inner retina. It runs from the optic nerve posteriorly to the ciliary body anteriorly. At the optic nerve, the choroid becomes continuous with the pia and arachnoid matter. Its rich blood supply comes from the long and short posterior ciliary arteries, which are branches of the ophthalmic artery. This blood supply also nourishes the outer layers of the retina. The second part of the vascular layer is the ciliary body. This is a structure which sits beside the anterior part of the choroid on either side of the lens. There are two important parts. The first is the muscular part, which contracts to control the shape of the lens. There are three types of muscle fibres. Longitudinal fibres, which are situated most posteriorly, the oblique or radial fibres, and the circular fibres, which are most anterior. The second important part of the ciliary body comprises the ciliary processes. These are finger-like projections of the ciliary body. There is the pars placata anteriorly and the pars plana posteriorly. The pars placata is connected to the lens of the eye by the zonular fibres. As the muscles of the ciliary body contract, the ciliary body is pushed forwards and this relieves tension from the zonular fibres. This, in turn, allows the lens to become more globular during accommodation. Another important function of the ciliary body is the secretion of aqueous humour, which provides structure to the anterior part of the eye. The last structure of the vascular layer is the iris, which you can see as the coloured part of the eye. The iris is a thin pigmented diaphragm with a central aperture, the pupil, which allows light to enter the eye. The iris divides the front of the eye into anterior and posterior chambers. The size of the pupil is controlled by the iris using the two muscles, the dilator pupillae, which dilates the pupil and is innervated by sympathetic nervous system fibres, and the sphincter pupillae, which constricts the pupil and is innervated by parasympathetic nerve fibres. This occurs as a pupillary reflex in response to changes in light intensity. Now, on to the final inner layer of the eye, the nervous layer. The nervous layer is comprised of the retina, the retina is a transparent membrane of varying thickness derived from the neural ectoderm of the optic cup in embryology. There are two main developmental layers within the optic cup which form the adult retina, the outer pigment layer and the inner neural layer. The retina runs anteriorly from behind the ciliary body to form a wavy ring known as the aura serrata. Posteriorly, it extends to the optic nerve. At the centre of the posterior retina, there lies a yellow oval area known as the macula lutea. This is the area providing detailed colour vision. The outer pigmented area from the outer layer of the optic cup is formed by the retinal pigment epithelium, which are very important hexagonal shaped cells. These cells form part of the blood retinal barrier. Tight junctions between cells prevent toxic molecules and ions from damaging the neural layer. They also assist with storing rhodopsin and absorbing light. The inner neural retina is derived from the inner layer of the optic cup. It contains photoreceptors, rods and cones, bipolar cells, which are the first order neurons, 
and ganglion cells, which are the second order neurons. These ganglion cells go on to become the optic nerve as they become myelinated after leaving the lamina cribrosa three millimetres medially to the macula. The point where the nerve leaves is known as the optic disc, which also is known as the blind spot in human vision. Interestingly, the optic nerve is actually part of the central nervous system. Myelination occurs from oligodendrocytes rather than Schwann cells which are present in the peripheral nervous system. The optic nerve also contains meninges present within the rest of the brain. In total, there are 10 layers of the retina, which you can look at in more detail. In many animals, such as octopuses, the nervous layer is actually found on the outer layer of the retina, rather than the inside, meaning there is no blind spot. So there you have it, a summary of the main structures of the eye. I hope it was useful. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos covering the bones of the orbit, the blood supply of the eye and more. <laughs>